Galaxy S20 or iPhone 11? That's the choice many, many phone buyers will be making this year. The Galaxy S and iPhone series make up the vast majority of smartphone sales in the West, so let's take a very quick first look at how they measure up. Obviously there are plenty of similarities to see, both on the inside and the outside. Both sets of phones can do wireless charging, neither of them has a headphone jack, both are basically rounded glass and metal rectangles, but equally it doesn't take much to distinguish the iconic hefty notch of the iPhone from the cleaner front face of the Galaxy S20. With Samsung the screen to body ratio is greater, though of course you miss out on the iPhone's 3D Face ID feature. Samsung offers a more basic face unlock using just the front facing camera. Likewise, you get a more secure ultrasonic in-screen fingerprint option on the Galaxy S models, unlike the iPhone. Before we move completely beyond the display though, let's examine the one other major advantage that Samsung has, and that's the 120Hz refresh rate. You can't see that extra smoothness in a video at 30 frames per second here, but in person it's a noticeable improvement over 60Hz in everything from scrolling to gaming. On the Apple side, right now the iPad Pro screen can do 120Hz, but the iPhone can't. It's a similar situation with 5G. In the US, every Galaxy S20 will support 5G, though that'll vary globally. Currently, as you probably know, there is no 5G iPhone, although one is expected to break cover before the end of the year. One area where Apple's really crushed it this time around has been with battery life. Particularly the iPhone 11 Pro Max we have here, it's a big improvement over the longevity of older iPhones. Samsung almost always has bigger battery capacities on paper compared to Apple, and this year it's no exception. But Samsung has all these extra bells and whistles to power, from 5G to that 120Hz screen, and I'll be curious to see how real-world battery life plays out, and whether having between 4000 and 5000 mAh batteries really improves longevity or just keeps things level. Samsung does at least offer faster wired charging though, up to 45 watts with an adapter that's sold separately. What's also interesting is how these series of phones break down. So there are three iPhones and three Galaxy S20s, but the starting point for the S20 is much higher than that of the iPhone 11, 699 in the US versus 999, with the Ultra maxing out to shy of 1400 US dollars. It is also possible to configure an iPhone 11 Pro Max with ludicrous specs and an equally ludicrous price tag, but that initial barrier to entry is much higher with the S20 series. There's also the question of size for the higher end models. Whereas the iPhone 11 Pro Max is at least reasonably one-handable, at least for a traditionally large phone, it's dwarfed at the high end by the Galaxy S20 Ultra here. On the software side, it's obviously Android versus iOS, and that's a whole other argument we're not going to get too deep into here. Android is more customizable and tweakable, and Samsung's One UI has a massive feature set on top of that. iOS is arguably more polished and naturally has better integration with the rest of Apple's ecosystem, plus very fast updates directly from Apple. Samsung has gotten pretty good at pushing out Android security updates in a timely manner, but you're still going to be waiting 2 or 3 months to get your S20 on Android 11 when that arrives later in the year. Camera performance is an area of huge competition among phone makers, and while Apple's new night mode and ultra-wide camera in the iPhone 11 are impressive, Samsung has upped the stakes yet again. There are upgraded sensors across the board in the S20 for better low-light performance in the standard ultra-wide and telephoto cameras, and the telephoto in the S20 and S20 Plus has a 3x optical zoom now, unlike Apple's mere 2x, along with 8K video support to boot. And if you splurge on a Galaxy S20 Ultra, you'll get Samsung's largest ever sensor, a 108 megapixel unit with even better low-light capabilities, and that's also paired with a ridiculous 10x hybrid zoom that makes short work of Apple's telephoto. It's going to be a close fight between these two phones, but in terms of photography, Samsung definitely has the edge. So that's just our first impressions of these two phones side by side. We'll have more to come once we spend more time with the S20 series. Let us know which one you choose down in the comments. Is the Galaxy S20 just too expensive this year? Or does the iPhone look boring next to Samsung's latest and greatest? Stick around and subscribe so you don't miss the rest of our S20 coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.